the things you saw. We are with the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to sing this song together. We have come to the Savior. We have come to the Lord. We have come unto you, Lord. We have come unto you, Lord. We have come to you, Lord. We have We is the Lord. Hallelujah. There is one thing the devil, the devil, the accuser of brethren, has installed in the life of believers today, which even believers they don't even know, which is losing focus. He has caused the, the form of distraction in the body of Christ. You see, when preaching is going on, prayer is going on. You see believers here and there doing all sorts of things, doing things that, that do not yield good results to their soul, doing things that is not according to the line of God. You see, the word of God is going on. People are making calls. Those who are cooking are in the kitchen, those who are doing other things, those who are making calls, those who are busy doing things with people where the things of God is in place. We are going to raise our voice tonight and pray that God, that God should take every, every power of darkness that has instilled the, the powers of confusion and distraction and the spirit of losing focus. We are going to pray that God should remove it away from our midst before we commence. Oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord Jesus. Tonight, take your name out. Take powers name, of Jesus. darkness that want to instill distraction. Oh Lord Jesus. But Every spirit of losing focus, every spirit of lacking power, every spirit of losing focus. Oh Lord, we power to come in our life. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, by your mighty name, we pray. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for all you have done in our life, O oh Lord. We are about to hear your word. Father, come and speak through me, O oh Lord. I don't want to speak on my own. Father, appear for me to disappear this hour. Amen. Lord Jesus, give us the spirit to hear your word and do according to it, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, you are all welcome in Jesus' name. Please, I want Amen. to beg you, every one of you, I want everyone to be attentive. Please give yourself some time and listen to the word of God because it will yield good results to your soul. We are going to be looking at the topic that says losing focus. If you have that one pen, please, I want you to be writing so that we communicate together. It's a Bible study. We are learning. It's a vast topic and it's very very voluminous and very normal. We are, going to, we are going to be taking it one after the other, step by step. Losing focus. Firstly, what is losing focus? Praise the Lord. Are we together? Hallelujah. Firstly, what is losing focus? Losing focus is the art of disobedience or not being attentive or concentrating to the laws and the rules and regulations of God's word. I repeat, I repeat again, I come again. Losing focus or distraction, you can also look at it as distraction. 
you can rephrase it as distraction, is the act of disobedience, of not being concentrating or attentive to the rules and regulations and, the, and God's word. We are going to be looking at the biblical character of those who lose focus in the Bible, which we all know because we don't have much time. We are going to be treating everything step by step. Example of those, the first people who lose focus on God, Adam and Eve. Praise the Lord. Adam and Eve. Another person, are we together? Yes. Praise the Lord. Another person which we all know, Samson. Samson, another person, but he later, he later apologized to God, which is David, the month after God's own act. Another person we all know is Solomon, who was taken away. I forget the laws of God. Solomon. Now, without wasting much time, I want someone to open to the book of Genesis 3, verse 1 to 3. Please, I need a fast reader. Genesis 3, verse 1 to 3. Another person, the same Genesis 3, 4, from verse 4 to 5. Book of Genesis 3, verse 1 to 3. I read from New King James Version. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden, verse two. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruits of the trees of the garden, verse three, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Master Jesus, Hallelujah. we are going to be looking at reasons why people lose focus, reasons why believers lose focus in God. Just as our brother has just read, number one reason, I don't know if we are writing, number one reason why people lose focus is Desiring the things of the world above the things of God. I repeat again, desiring the things of the world above the things of God. If you look at that Genesis series, the, the serpent, the devil, which we all know, the roaring lion, moving around, moving around, looking for whom to devour, he came to him, which was the wife of Adam. He came to deceive him. He broke the truth. We look at that Genesis 1, 1 to 3, as our brother has just said. He said, he said, he said to Eve, he said, this fruit, if you eat it, you will be wise. It's read from verse 4 to 6. He said, if you eat this fruit, you will be wise. You will be wise as God. He deceived Eve. But Eve, so Satan, ah, this fruit, God instructed us not to eat it. If we eat this fruit, we all will die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I enlisted here above, which is desiring the things of the world above the things of this, the things above the things of God, desiring the things of the world above the things of God. If you look at what happened there, Eve was drawn, was drawn away from, 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 the, from the path of God. It is, it, it, our, our desire was for the things of this earth. He gave the devil the chance by desiring the fruit. Ah, this thing is very fine. That is what is wrong with our generation today. When we see things, we don't want to we don't want to remove our face from it. We want to look it to the extent that that thing leads us to sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Instead of us to, to quickly 
remove our attention immediately. We focus our attention on that thing. By so doing, the devil, we, we give the devil a chance. Just as if I, I want someone to put to that same the Genesis 3 for verse 4 to 6. Genesis 3 for verse 4 to 6. Genesis 3 verse 4 to 6. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was present to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of it fruits and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my brother. If you not look at the word there, a lot of things were mentioned there. He said he also gives some part of the fruit to her husband. He also breaks the truth, the covenant that his own husband has with God, that you must not eat of this fruit. But unfortunately, her husband also broke the truth. You see, you see, Eve desired the fruit. He desired the fruit. That is what is wrong with our generation today. Ah, we think things that are very beautiful. There is a saying that says, not all that glitters are gold. So many people today, so many believers today, so many Christians today go to church or prophecy. Sugar coated churches. Church where they don't preach repentance. That is where many believers find their set today. We always like weird things are done already. We always like already made things. And devil is very corny in nature. If you beat him from this way, if you defeat, let me tell you one thing. When you defeat devil from this right side, devil will come from the other side. Always have this at the back of your mind. Anytime you defeat devil from this right side, devil will come from the left side. When you defeat him through the right side, it will come from the back side. That is why you have to keep on striving. Verse 2 of uh, verse, uh, chapter, uh, let me say, reasons why people lose focus. Verse 2. We are going to look at James 4, verse 24. James 4, verse 4. Are we there? The book of James chapter four, verse four. Adulterers and adulteress, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Amen. Amen. Reason why people lose focus. Number two, which is disobedience. For you to lose focus, the first thing that comes is for you to desire in the things that will make you to lose focus. Just like just like Eve. The devil came to deceive her. But with a negligence and with a human fleshy desire. She desired in the taste of the world. She disobeyed God. Number two of the reasons why people lose focus, disobedience. That is number two, disobedience. They disobeyed God. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. If Jesus did not came, we will not have been redeemed. We would have remained Dead forever. 
That is why we have to always keep on thanking God for sending Jesus Christ, the mediator between man and God. He came to redeem us. Let us also look at the book of the book of Matthew 14, 25 to 31. Matthew 14, 25 to 31. Another person, First Kings 11, 1 to 10. Matthew 14, 25 to 31. Matthew 14, verse 25 to 31. I read. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear, 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid, 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water, 29. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus, 30. But when he saw that the wind was bestridous, he was afraid and beginning to seek. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. 31, the last verse. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Praise the Lord. If you look at that, that verse very well, you see the way Peter lose focus because of the wind, the things of this world. He told Jesus, I want to walk like you on the sea. Jesus told him, come, come and walk, come and walk. But unfortunately, because of the things of this world, that is what is wrong with us today, we believers. Because of the circumstances that we face in life, we forsake God, we put God aside. And you have to know this, anytime you put God aside, anytime you get distracted, anytime you get distracted or you lose focus, you begin to sink spiritually. Everything around you begins to sink. So spiritual life, that is how you see people, they say, ah, I was this, I was that. I used to see revelations. I used to see things. I used to prophesy. But now I cannot do those things. Everything around, everything concerning you are sunk down because you have lost focus. Praise the Lord. We are going to look at the uh, number, number theory of the reason why people lose focus. Third group, people you associate yourself with, people you move around with, check yourself. The Bible makes us want to say this. It's a bad company, corrupt good character. Check yourself. What, who are those, what, what kind of people do you keep as friends? Don't just keep toxic and negative people around you. And with the name of friendship. You see some people, they want to keep everybody at home. No, everyone is not your enemy, but everybody must not be your friend. Because there's a saying that says, if you show me your friend, I tell me who you are. No matter how strong are you, no matter how religious are you, if you are more intimate to the strength of this world, to are more accompanied to the things of this world, to the people of this world, they will draw you away. If you cannot convert them, you see people saying, I want to marry an unbeliever. It does not really matter. I will marry an unbeliever. It does not really matter. <laughs> if you are not careful, that unbeliever, that unbeliever will draw you away from God's earth. You began to lose focus on God. You began to sink. Everything around you began to sink. That is why you have to be very, you have to be very careful when serving God for you not to lose focus. Just like Solomon, God told him, "Never you marry from the evil man, the Hittite, from the Egyptian." But Solomon, Solomon turned back at God, he went and married 
Shuru's daughter. Praise the Lord. You don't have to run your life by people around you. Everyone is not my enemy, but not everyone is my friend. When I notice you that you are the kind of person, always look this. There are, there, are, there are some people, anytime you want to pray, or anytime you want to do God's word, or anytime you want to meditate or study on God's word, that is when they will come. That is when they know they want to start calling you. Even when you tell them, I'm busy now, please, don't call me. We'll talk about it later. They will still insist. Ah, my brother, all, this, all those kind of things. Eh? Those kind of people, you have to be very careful of those kind of people. You have to be very careful of this kind of people. And be careful of those that always clap for you. You have not got it to where you are going. People have started clapping for you. Maybe you are in stage five or stage four. People have already put you in stage 10. Be very careful of those kind of people. People that always clap you, they clap your destiny away from you. Be very careful of those kind of people. These are the reasons why people lose focus. That is vastly. So I want us to look at, uh, we don't have much time. Jeremiah never sees. Jeremiah never sees. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 6. I read, your dwelling place is in the midst of the sea. Through the sea, they refuse to know me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are also going to be looking at uh, reasons why the same reasons why people lose focus on God, ignore ignoring God's word, ignoring God's word because we don't have much time. I'm going to make it fast a little bit. People began to ignore ignore God's word. Ah, this God said. I don't think that this God exists. Who is this God said? Ah, he could not do this. He could not do that. All sort of unnecessary excuses. They, now, they, they no longer meditate on the word of God. But the word of God makes us say, meditate on this word, day and night. This word must not depart from your mouth. They no longer meditate on God's word. You can also add this to the, the reasons why people lose focus on God. But, uh, number five, which is uh, lack of visiting the, uh, the secret place which is the prayer. People no, no longer visit the secret place, apart from meditating on God's word. They no longer pray. For you notice your life. That is why as a Christian, as a believer, you have to always do your spiritual checkup. Always examine yourself. Examine yourself daily. If you are praying, are you that kind of believer that you also wake up at? Mm. And then let me go to work. You will forget to pray. Some don't even pray. Some they, for them to even wake up at midnight to join the prayer is even hard. And I know it's not easy to join the midnight prayer, but you have to keep on striving because that is when the devil will pray. The midnight, that is when they consult your spirit. Because when you sleep, your spirit departs from you. That is why you have to be awake. Because we wrestle not against human beings. The book of Ephesians. But it gives principalities and power. Yes, you have to be awake. You have to be prayerful. Jesus Christ make us to know that he said, pray without season. He did not say you should pray only when you want to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have more time. I want us to I want us to write this Bible verse down. Ezekiel 20, verse 21 to 28. That's it. Because of time. Ezekiel 20. Okay, Praise the Lord. Are we together? Hallelujah. Ezekiel 20. You are muted, sir. Amen. Amen. 
increase your volume, sir. Right down, Matthew 24, verse. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue your teaching, sir. When you are done, you can write the Bible verse at the chat. Amen. 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 We can hear you, sir. Go on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at the things why. Amen. 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 Sorry, my camera, please. See, things that happen when you lose focus. I wanted to write that and see sub sub edit to things that happen when you lose focus on God. Let's open to the book of Isaiah 41, verse 10. Book of Isaiah 41, verse 10. I read. Continue. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. 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 I said earlier things that happen when you lose focus. One, you feel intimidated. Devil began to intimidate you. Two, you now become to slave of the sin. As people are saying that uh, as a believer, as a believer, as a Christian, as the word is saying, that is what I hear people saying at times. They do say, uh, the day you receive Christ or as a Christian, you have already become a slave. But our Lord Jesus Christ make, it, make us to know that that is a lie. Because he said in his word, that he who, that he who live in sin is a slave to sin. Is a slave to sin. The day you lose focus on God, a lot of things began to happen to you. You began to lose focus. You began to feel intimidated. Everything around you began to weigh down. Everything around you began to sink. Everything will begin to sink. Everything will begin to move upside down. That is why you have to be very careful. You have to be prayerful. The Bible makes us when you say be watchful of the devil, the roaring lion. He's looking for him to devour, looking for him to deceive. Day by day, you as a Christian, are you really watchful? Ask yourself this question. Are you really focusing on God? Because by the time you, you lose focus, God, he set, your, he set himself away from you. It's just like aeroplane. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Just like, just like aeroplane. If you are looking at it from the ground, it's very small. But when you go to the airport, it's very close. And it's our God. It's, your sin will separate you from God. Even when you are praying, you say the, the prayer of a sinner is an abomination to God. Your sin 
will draw God away from you. But when you are focused on God, when you are living right, rightfully, righteously, God will come close to you. Praise the Lord. May God give us the strength to remain in this world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want us to look at 1 Peter 1 verse 8. 1 Peter 1 verse 8. The book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1 verse 8. I read. Whom have we not seen you? Whom have yeah. not have it not see you love, though now you you do not see him yet believing. Rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Amen. Amen. You see, we have not seen God face to face. But for you to serve God, you must have faith. You cannot be focused on God without having faith. It's impossible. It is impossible to please God without faith. If you say you love God, you don't trust in God, you cannot serve God. You must trust in him. You must trust in him with all your heart. He said, faith is the substance of things offered and the evidence of things not seen. You have not seen it, but you are believing in it. That is God. That is why you have to have faith so that you will be able to focus on God's word. Praise the Lord. I want us to also look at principles on how you can keep your focus. How can you keep your focus on God as a believer? As a believer, ask yourself this question. How can I keep my focus on God? How can you keep your focus on God? Number one thing, ask yourself, how can I keep my focus on God, the creator of heaven and earth? How can you keep your focus? Number one is keeping God your number one priority in life. Keep God your number one priority, no matter what it takes. Challenges may come from different ways, from different paths from different sources of the earth. But you have to keep God. Keep God first in anything you do. The word of God makes us when he says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and every other thing. Every other thing, but the people of this generation, the children of this generation, they no longer seek God first. They are seeking their own fleshy desire first. Instead of putting God first, they are forsaking God. Now they have lose focus. So many believers today, you may think you are living fine. You may think you are still speaking in tongues. Do you know not now, even the devil have their own tongue. You may think you are still in line with God, but you have missed it. The Holy Spirit is no longer in you because you have lose focus for long. You have lose focus. I want us to open to the book of Hebrews 3 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews 3 verse 1. Therefore, holy brethren, mm, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high prince of our confession, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us also put to the because we don't have much time. Luke 2, verse 49. Write that down. Matthew, Luke 2, verse 49. Write Matthew 15, verse 8. Are you there? Matthew 15, verse 8. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Psalm 19, verse 19.
ಹೌದು i came to redeem the world from sin is the second adam that came to redeem us from sin that our forefather adam and eve this on ground study the lifestyle of jesus christ you as a christian anything you do always ask yourself always check your mindset if it were jesus christ will he do this thing before you commit anything because for you to serve god for you to serve god the spirit and the truth you must be like that that's right that's right you must be like christ study the lifestyle of jesus christ imitate jesus live like christ don't live like the world by so doing you 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 will be more focused on the things of god praise the lord Hallelujah. Discipline your flesh. This one, I love this one very much. How can you focus on God's word? Discipline your flesh. This eyes. He said, whatever that will make you not to enter the kingdom of God, pluck it away. Take it away from your side. What are those things? I will not make you to enter the kingdom of God. This flesh, this body you are seeing, this dust, he always wage war with the spirit that is why you have to discipline this flesh discipline your eye discipline everything around you everything concerning yourself discipline it your ear what you listening to discipline everything what you see there is a probability that yes you may because every day of our life because we live in a sinful world Prophet Prophet Moses once said that you are you cannot do without them. They are around you. Yes, it's true. You cannot do without them. You cannot do without them. Even this Bible we are reading, where they are doing it, those people there they wear trousers. If they are wearing trousers, you don't know where they are publishing the Bible that we are reading today. Yes, that is why if you go out, you go out your eyes. a portrait to the things of this world you have to set your eyes away immediately and begin to pray in your heart don't be focused on that thing you are saying and is what people for our women today they you tell them dress modest dressing modest to please god is yes that is number one well you dressing modest you know is very good inside the church or in the presence of god you have to dress modest is very important as a child of god not just the women only even the men because sometimes the with the men you see them wear trousers doing low waist all these things are things of the world all these things are things of the flesh you as a woman you are going to the church or you are going to the gathering or any gathering do you not know that your dressing and make people to lose focus you are dressing now you are dressing like a Jezebel exposing all part of your body that god gave to you do you not know that your own body can make people even the, even the believers even the believers that is why you see all this uh, all this women that always go to the house of god to try to tempt the, the pastor They always try and wear Jezebel apparels just to deceive the pastors. The pastor may be spiritual, but by the time he sees that woman, he may lose his focus. But if he's not strong without the grace of God, he may lose his focus. There's a probability. There's a possibility. That is why you, as a woman, the Bible makes us say, "Is we say for you, he say 
when anybody that makes any of these little ones to commit sin, it's better for him or her to tie a stone around his neck and be dragged into the sea. You have to do everything possible, everything humanly possible to be holy. You have to make yourself a living sacrifice. This body you are seeing is the temple of God. You have to make everything concerning you a living sacrifice for God. You may say, oh, I'm living right full. I'm doing the things of God. I'm serving God, the spirit and the truth. But your body, the way you dress, I'm making people to lose focus. Sense of omission. Sense of commission. That is why you always, as a child of God, try and dress well. For you know to make men to lose focus. Praise the Lord. Are we together? I'm taking much of the time. I want us to open to the book of uh, I want us to look at the book of First Peter 1, verse 13. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. I read. Therefore, guide up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You have to guide your mind, as I said earlier before. Guard your mindset. Sometimes, still, as a human being, you see this flesh, you always try to contradict our faith. Sometimes, when you stand like this, some Evil ideas may just come. Evil ideas may just come. That is, why, that is why you have to rebuke it immediately. Even with Jesus, devil is not a respecter of, of, of anointing. He's not a respecter of your fasting or any other thing. He's not a respecter of any man. Devil does not respect you. When Jesus finished his 40 days prayer and fasting, devil came to distract Jesus, he came. You must always get distracted. Even Jesus make us to know that. He said, tribulation must come as a child of God. Tribulation must come. Don't say, no, I'm living in Christ Jesus. I know not God tribulation. He that serve God, he that believe in Lord Jesus Christ, he that serve the Lord Jesus Christ must suffer persecution. We all know how the 12 apostles died. Yes. You have to guide your mindset. Devil may come at any time to distract you. Job was one of the biblical example or biblical character that did not lose focus on God, despite his challenges. Just imagine someone like Brigade or Mazuka Beg, the owner of Facebook, or Dangote. Just fall down one day. And he was asked, and they were asked, just cause God. Imagine what they will say. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Imagine, what they will say. Imagine a believer that is living worthy. Believers of this generation. Imagine those that are living worthy. Those that are living right. But when devil come with his own distraction. How many will stand by their faith? How many? Many will fall. No, before you see someone like Job, this generation, it's very hard. It takes the grace of God for a big man that owns luxuries of animals that is very rich, just fall down one day. May God give us the grace to stand firm. I want us to also look at the benefits of not of not focusing of not losing focus on God. Psalm 112, verse 7. Someone will put to the book of Psalm 112, verse 7. Another person, Psalm 91, Psalm. verse 14 to 15. Sorry, sir. I want another person to Psalm. put to the book of Psalm 91, 14 to 15. The first Psalm. person. 
Yes. Psalm 112, verse 7. He will yes. not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those that did not lose focus on God, they are not afraid. There's one thing that the devil do, the kingdom of darkness, there's one thing they do. If they want to distract you, they first of all bring the spirit of fear. That is what they did to Peter in the sea. They brought the wind. We all know what the wind is. They brought the wind to distract him from Jesus. They will first of all bring fear. That is why as a child of God, you have to be bold. You have to be courageous in all your ways. Despite the difficulties, despite the challenges, you have to be bold. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith in Christ Jesus. Don't fall. You have to be bold and courageous in anything you do. Despite I don't know what you are facing. I don't know what you are passing through, whether financial challenges, whether spiritual challenges. You have to be bold and courageous. Though the devil may be tremble, you have to be strong. You have to be courageous. Hold on to your faith. Don't fear. For you to, for you to keep focus on God, you have to be very strong with the Lord. You have to remove the spirit of fear aside. Because the word of God makes us to me say, the spirit that God has given us has not made us to be timid, has not made us to be small. But the spirit of power is not the spirit of fear. The Holy Spirit is the most powerful. Praise the Lord. He is the comforter. Hallelujah. That is why you have to be bold in God's word. Benefits of not losing focus on God. Number one, perfect peace. Perfect peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Perfect peace. I want us to move open to the book of Isaiah 26, verse 3. We don't the have book time. Of Isaiah 26, verse 3. I read. Yes. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Praise the Lord. Just look at it. I don't know if someone is saying amen to that verse. He said, God will keep you on perfect peace because you trust in God. That is why you have to trust. There's a saying that says, he said, say, in, in the presence of peace, there is a, he said, war and conflict is no absence. Jesus Christ made us to know that you as a believer, you must pass through tribulations of this life. But if you focus on God, he will redeem you. He will set you free from every powers of darkness. Yes. He will set you free. He said, he said you may suffer tribulation. He said, but just can't also went forward and say, he said, be of good share. Is it easy for someone who is facing financial challenges or someone who is facing spiritual challenges or any problem? To be of good share. What our Lord Jesus Christ made us to know that He said, He said, despite your challenges, He said, be of good share. He take only the grace. He take only the grace. He take only the grace for someone who is facing challenges. Uh, Jesus is trying to explain something here. He said, though you may face challenges, the problem of this world. Oh, my children is not this. My children did not go to school. My children's school fees, my ass rent, papers, things around, things of this world. He said, be of good share. Be of good share. He takes the grace. That is why you have to focus on God. You have to focus. No matter the challenges that weigh you down, no matter the challenges, no matter things that are going around you, be it family challenges, be it spiritual challenges, be it financial challenges, be it your earth, be it anything. You have to put them aside. Put everything aside. Just tell Jesus Christ, I'm for you. God, I'm for you. God will begin to fight your battle. 
la joe praise the lord hallelujah come on to open let us all look at those who don't lose focus on god benefits of not losing focus on god spiritual growth and stability let's write that one down i don't want to explain that because of time number two spiritual growth and stability number three you will become fruitful you will become fruitful if you are focused on god you will become fruitful john 15 4 to 6 john 15 4 to 6 john 15 verse 4 to 6 i read fast it says, abide in me and i in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine as you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire they are burned amen praise the lord hallelujah when you focus on god one of the benefits is for you to bear fruit god will abide in you every day people pray we pray uh, we need the holy spirit we need the holy spirit we need the holy spirit but you are not doing things you are not focusing on god's word you are focusing on those things that are not of god the things of the flesh how can god abide in you if god did not abide in you you will never see the kingdom of god you will never receive the eternal life amen amen Father, thank you. Number five, the benefit of not losing, benefit of one that don't lose focus, God will draw near to you. God will draw near to you. I don't know if someone is writing there. God will draw near to you. Even in our own life, in our own social life, you see some people, despite what they are facing, they don't like to share their challenges to people. They don't like to share their, their secrets to people. Even their own, to their own family members. There are some people they would love to share their secrets with. Not everybody. As we are here now, there are, there are people you cannot share secrets with. Even in your family, there are people you cannot share secrets with. Take it or leave it. Yes. So be it. That is our God is. God showed the secret of the kingdom to those who trust and those who serve him. God always comes close to those people that focus on him day and night. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. We don't have much time. Let's look at the Another number six there, you experience free, uh, freedom. When you are focused on God, you experience freedom. I don't, I'm taking much of the time. You experience freedom. Let's write this verse down. John 8, 31 to 36. John 8, 31 to 36. Number seven, God will give you the desire of your life. When you are focused on God, God will give you the desire of your life. Don't let it. Then number eight, you experience joy. You experience joy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You experience joy. That is number eight. You see, happiness is determined by our own circumstance. It's different from joy. Happiness is far different from joy. Happiness is determined by the circumstance. I would say the circumstance around us. Oh, I just received my paper. Began to, you begin to happy. 
But joy is the fruit of the spirit. Not everyone that have it. Not everyone that have it. Happiness may come and go. But those with the joy of God, the joy is one of the fruits of this, one of the spiritual gifts of God. When you have joy in you, you are always happy. No matter the circumstances that come around you, you are always focused. You don't lose focus on God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's open to the book of Isaiah 29, verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13. I read. Therefore, the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandments of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is uh, for you as a believer. I want you to write this one down, add to what we have said before, eternal life. When you are focused on God, you receive eternal life. God don't want anyone to perish. But people, but the humans, people of this generation, just like uh, those in the Sodom and Gomorrah, where everyone was that those in the Sodom and Gomorrah, we are doing things that are not in line with God. God is the only God. No one can please God without holiness, without being righteous. You must be righteous and you must be holy for you to please God. For you as a, a child of God, I want us to note this. Always observe yourself. Always discipline yourself. Discipline things around you, even your children. What you do, if you are the kind of person that always focus on internet, Facebook, Facebook is good. Twitter is good because people are making money from there. You can also pass the message of God through there. But if you let the Facebook to control you, that is when you begin to lose focus. If you focus on television sets more than the things of God, you focus on the things of this world, focus on Mary Kay, you are that kind of woman before you go out, you must Mary Kay yourself. Your children are learning from you. They train up a child the way they should grow. If they grow, they will not depart from it. All these things, try and carry your children along. Note this as a believer, your, your family is your Jerusalem. Your family should be your first priority. Your family should be the first people you to preach to. They are your Jerusalem. You have to carry them along. Don't just carry yourself along. Try carrying your family along, your children. If you are that kind of woman or that kind of man, that kind of woman, if you, are, if you, if you don't watch five Nigerian movies a day, you are there shouting, ah, this guy did not do this thing well. You, you, most of them forget to wash the plate at home or do the, the things of, uh, of the asshole. Even when the, the, the father or the husband comes back from work, that is when they start, oh, uh, daddy, what will you eat now? They start preparing to me. That man will eat into me the rest of his life. You just imagine. God help us. So that is why you as a believer, always try and carry your family along, your children. They are watching you. They, they are seeing everything you are doing. If you are the type of person that pray, always, your children will always emulate from you. May God bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I Amen. Amen. 